The following program is made possible by the friends and partners of Daniel Fusco Ministries. Check this out from today's edition of Real with Daniel Fusco. You don't have to get a course. You don't, you don't have to go and show up at the gym every morning at 4.30 and do this special hit workout, although that might be a great thing. You simply need to learn the art of living your lives before the Lord in whom you live anyway. Where you are today, you have to realize that God knows every detail of where you are today. I think it was Einstein who said it, I want to know God's thoughts because everything else was just details. There's a scripture that we're hanging over this series that we're calling Radiant. And it's Psalm 34, verse 5, which says, And they looked to him, speaking of the Lord, and they were radiant. And I believe that the thing that is going to differentiate the people of God from everybody else in our society is that. When we learn how no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the details are, no matter how good or bad we like the situation, we find ourselves looking to the Lord, and because we're looking to Him, because God is light and in Him is no darkness at all, that we look to Him and His light reflects off of us into the world. And I believe that's what God wants to do in each one of us, right here, right now, in the circumstances of our lives. But in order for us to be radiant, you don't have to buy the $700 fake tan. You don't have to buy the anti-wrinkle cream, even though you can deal with your wrinkles, but not for this. You don't have to get a course. You don't, you don't have to go and show up at the gym every morning at 4.30 and do this special hit workout, although that might be a great thing. You simply need to learn the art of living your lives before the Lord in whom you live anyway. When we learn how to look to him in the good times and the bad times, when we learn how when things are falling apart to lift our eyes off of the circumstances and on to the Lord, as we see him, his light reflects into our lives and then begins to reflect through our lives. And I believe as we study Psalm 139 together over the next bunch of weeks, we're going to learn how to do that. So I want you to open up your Bible, Psalm 139, verses 1 to 6. We're going to take those together. So look at what it says, Psalm 139, picking up in verse 1. It says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down. You are acquainted with all my ways, for there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Now, these six verses are really broken down into three parts. You have verse one gives you the principle, and then verses two to four gives you its ex explanation of the principle, and then really verses you know, five and six is really the application of it. So it's a principle, the principle's unpacked, and then it's applied, right? So what's the principle, verse one? That God knows everything about you. That's the principle. Oh, Lord, you have searched me and known me. God knows everything about you. Now, what's so, this is what we call omniscience. Look at the person next to you and say, omniscience. Omniscience. Omni, as a prefix, means all, and the word is science, which is the idea of knowing or knowledge. Now, here's the deal. 
God is all-knowing. All of us long to be known. Every single one of us, relational. We want people to know us, right? It's why we dress the way we do. It's why we post what we want to post on social media. It's why we talk to people. We all long to be known. And what I want to tell you is that's a good thing that you're longing to be known, but you are already known even beyond your own knowledge of yourself. Because it says, oh Lord, look in your Bibles. Notice it says capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That in the Hebrew language is the personal name of God. Four letters in the Hebrew, a yod -Heh and a vuv -Heh, which would commonly be called Yahweh or Jehovah, depending on how you put in the vowel pointing. That's another discussion on biblical linguistics. We can have it on another day. But the per, oh God, the personal God who revealed himself to the children of Israel through Moses at the burning bush, the I am who I am, ultimately the God who Jesus brought forth. That God knows everything about you. Notice these words, you have searched me and you have known me. Now, think about that. You can search but not know, right? I mean, how many of us have searched for answers and we still don't understand it? But what's so beautiful about this word, no, is in the Hebrew language, this word is, it really speaks of the highest intimacy between people. Uh, when Adam and Eve became married and they came together as one flesh, it says, and Adam knew Eve, his wife. Now, what this means is that the creator and sustainer God who sent Jesus on a rescue mission for us already has searched all of us. He knows everything about us, and he knows us in the most intimate of ways. God searches you, and he knows you more clearly than you could ever know yourself, and he loves you. The biggest issue I believe we have in our world today is that it is possible to move through the world and not know that there is a God who knows you. And we, when we start to live our lives without the awareness of the reality of God, we start living lives based on our own ideas. And the problem for all of us is that the Bible is clear that it says there is a way that seems right to people, but that's the way of death. How many of you have adjusted something in your life in the last six months? Pretty much all of us, right? Why? Because you begin to realize, yeah, that's not working. I can't do that. That's not healthy. That's not God's best. When you become aware that every single day as you move through the world that the God knows you, you're not hiding anything. You know, so Jesus talks like that. And, and listen to what the writer of the Hebrews says. Hebrews 4.13 says, For there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. See, the idea is, is that God sees everything clearly. He's the only person who truly knows who you are truly knows not only your struggles, but the reason for your struggles. Jesus said the things that are whispered in the inner rooms will be shouted from the house stops. See, something changes when we realize that God is God and that he sees everything about us. Because now, like, we live in a day and age where, like Adam and Eve in the garden, we have a tendency to want to cover ourselves. Right? It's like as if God didn't know what's going on. And when you begin to realize that there's nothing that I do is, that's hidden, that I am truly, and when it says that we're naked, it's not just talk, it's not talking about physical nakedness. It's like your entire heart and soul and your entire life is wide open to God. There is nothing more transformational than that. Our integrity is rooted in the fact that we are naked and open to the Lord, and he sees it all, and we're not making it over on anybody. Because the all-knowing one 
knows me and knows you. And when we come into that awareness, what happens is, is we realize how much we need Jesus. Because we've all failed, and we know that we have. And this is why the older I get, the longer I walk with the Lord, the more grateful I am for Jesus. The God who knows me so intimately, every detail, every doubt, every fear, every mistake, my greatest calamities still love me enough to send his son on a rescue mission to take the punishment that I rightly deserve for my mistakes and took that punishment so I can know God, be in fellowship. I think for some of us, when we realize that God knows everything about us, you've known that for so long that you've stopped letting it impact the way that you live. And I think God wants to bring us to a fresh awareness of what it means to be known. Let God do that personal revival in you. And I believe for some of us, you're hearing this and you're saying, gosh, I do need saving. Yes, you do. And today's the day you're going to give your life to Jesus. You're going to give him your life and you're going to say, Lord, thank you for the forgiveness that I needed because when all that I am is open, scary. I've always said it. There'd be nothing more horrifying to me than if there was like a, on these screens here on the, on, in the sanctuary here, if all of a sudden there was like the, these are all the mistakes Daniel made. I mean, it'd be the longest sermon ever at Crossroads. <laughs> it'd be horrifying, Right? And the only solace that I have in that is I know that if your name and face popped up there, it'd be horrifying in a long list too. Because we're all in it together. And not that I'm happy that you fail and I'm happy that I fail, but all of us fail. And that's the point. That's why Jesus is so important. Because even on our best day, having walked with Jesus for decades, we are still radically in the need, in need of the grace of God, aren't we? Like, it's like you never stop needing the grace of God. Because th what's hardest for those of us who've been walking with Jesus for a while is you know all the answers. Like, you already know, like, I'm supposed to be kind. I can't believe I just said that. I'm supposed to be patient. I am grumbling right now. Right? So the longer you walk with Jesus, the more you realize, like, oh, gosh. I need his help. And I'm here to tell you, he is an ever-present help. God never tires of being patient with us. Why? Because not only does God know everything about us, look at verses 2 and following. It says, it says, you know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down. You're acquainted with all of my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it. All together. See, what this teaches us is not only does God know everything about us, but God intimately understands your journey. It's not that, okay, God knows everything about you, and then he knows everything, and then he's gone. But it's like now we're looking at that whether, whatever you're doing, God knows the intimate details of all of it. I mean, it's so powerful to me that God knows when you sit down or when you stand up. So like when we're here at church and we're singing and you sit down, guess what? God knew that. And when it's time to worship after service and you stand up, guess what? God knows that. Now listen, I know a lot of things about my wife and I love my bride, but I do not know when she sits down and stands up often. And, and she's the closest human being to me in the entire world and I do not know that. And not only do I not know that, you, you put this in that context, notice this, you understand my thought afar off, which means before I even think the thunk that I'm thinking, before it pops in there, God already knows what I'm going to think. So someone said, that's scary. Isn't that scary? It's like, you're going to have the thought, and God's like, aha, they're going to have the thought. 
Because God's knowledge is so complete on who we are. Before that thought makes it into my brain, God's already known. Oh, Daniel's going to have that crazy idea. But not only that, he says, you comprehend my path and my lying down. You're acquainted with all of my ways. And here's the deal. One of the things that I think is so powerful about who God is is that God realizes that life is a journey. Remember Jesus said to them, he said, follow me. And he's saying, allow me to lead you on the journey. And I'm here to tell you, all of our lives, we're each on our own individual step of the journey. Where you are today, you have to realize that God knows every detail of where you are today. He knows the financial struggles. He knows the relationship issues. He knows the fears. He knows the doubts. He knows the mistakes. He knows the stinking thinking that when you don't have the mind of Christ, you're thinking all the wrong ways. He knows all of that. But he doesn't resist us in it. And I think that's so amazing to me. Because isn't it so you you find out like the, the, the rough stuff about somebody, like, yeah, I don't want to have anything to do with that. But God knows every part of the journey, and he's like, yeah, I love them. That's my child. I'm, I'm with them. I knew that about them. When you're going to bed at night, God knows it's time. Listen to this. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. It's like before we even speak, God knows the words that are going to come out of our mouths. Jesus said it this way, trying to encourage the people. I want you to be encouraged with this. Luke chapter 12, verses 6 and 7. Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. But that's how well God knows you. See, and, and that's why the, when you realize that God knows everything about you and that God is intimately acquainted an understanding of your journey, where you are on the journey, the only logical step to take is to trust him and follow him and to receive his grace because when the God who knows you better than you know yourself, I mean, you don't know how many hairs are on your head. You don't know what you're going to think before you think it. You don't know what you're going to say before it falls out of your mouth and then after you say it, you're like, I should have said anything, right? And, and, and so God knows all this, right? And God is saying, listen, I want to put my spirit within you, and you need to be forgiven. And there's a way to live life that leads to the abundant life. And the way that you're going to do it is not right unless you follow my way. And then the only logical step then for a person is to say, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to receive you. If you say I need Jesus, okay. If you're saying I need to be filled with your spirit, okay. Because God knows things that we will never even fathom. I think it was Einstein who said it. I want to know God's thoughts because everything else was just details. And we live in a world where we're so, we're so enamored with our understanding of the details when there's so much more for humanity. And it only comes when a person trusts the Lord. Now... We've seen the principle, God knows everything. We, we've seen it explain that like every part of your journey God already understands. And then notice how this applies. Verse 5, it says, You have hedged me behind and before, and you have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I can't attain it. And really what we learned here is that when it's applied, you end up, Living a life where you realize that God's knowledge is unfathomable. Like, you land not in, God is omniscient, God is omniscient. You land in awe and wonder of the extravagant knowledge of God. Like, this idea of you have, in, you have hedged me behind and before. The idea is you've enclosed me. It, 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 and you laid your hand upon me. It literally speaks of like a father's love for a child. Here the idea is that God, he's protecting us and, he, and he's enclosing around us. He's caring for us and he's laying his hand upon us. He's placing his hand upon us. And then finally David in the psalm is just like, such knowledge 
It's too good. It's too overwhelming. It is high. It's, it's, it's heavenly wisdom, and I, I can't even fathom it. And when a person lands there, this is the place where worship begins. Worship begins when we stop trying to figure it out, and we just say, oh, God, I can't even fathom what your plan is, so I trust you. Awesome. I'm never going to understand it. And, of course, it says, in the prophet Isaiah said it this way, Isaiah 55, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my, your, nor are my ways your ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And that's the difference between God's thoughts and God's ways and our thoughts and our ways. And ultimately, David lands as he applies this, is that God's knowledge moves me to awe and wonder. And brothers and sisters, as I bring this message to a close, I believe in this year of restoration where we're saying we need to restore, we need our souls restored, and we need to restore our church family and our community, and we need to go restore our world. We need to learn how to walk in wonder and awe. For so many of us, we're just trying to, am I the only one who's just trying to figure everything out? I think a lot of us are like that. One of the big lessons God taught me on my time away is, Daniel, when you abide in faith, hope, and love, it's when you are aware that you can't figure it all out. Your job is when you can't figure it out to say, Lord, I trust you. That's faith. And Lord, and I know that I can't figure this out, but I know you have it figured out, and I know it's going to be good, even if it makes no sense to me. And because of that, I can just walk in love because I trust the Lord. I know that he's got a good plan. So I can just love people and it doesn't matter. And in a lot of ways, that is the fruit of realizing that God knows everything about each one of us. Everyone's journey, everyone's situation, all the details in ways that we can never fathom. And then we come back and we say, oh, Lord, your knowledge is completely beyond me. And that's what happens now when we believe in Jesus and we walk with him. Now, all of a sudden, you are, we are all completely out of our sphere of understanding. And God is inviting us. He's saying, look, I want you to live beyond yourself. I, I want you to get over what you think you understand. You don't even understand anything that you think you understand. There is more for you, but you have to step on out. Step on out from what feels safe and into what is truly secure, which is Him. And, and He's saying, look, I want you to do things you would never, I want you to be in a community group. I want you to serve. And, and you're saying, no, I don't want to be around people. And I don't want to serve because I want someone to finally serve me. And he's like, no, no, you're going to be happy when you give, not when you get. And he's like, you're like, no, but I want to get. And you're like, well, no. And, and the more you get, the less happy you are because it's completely, God's plan sounds upside down to us. But really, our ways are upside down. And when you realize that, then all of a sudden freedom comes and liberation comes and the abundant life comes and life in the spirit comes. And all of these things are on the other side of us coming to the point where we're like, listen, I cannot even fathom what God is doing. And I'm not even going to try and fathom what God is doing. I'm just going to trust him. I'm going to live in hope. And I'm going to love everybody. So if you're here today and you're already a follower of Jesus, listen. What would it look like for you every single day this week to try and land at a place of worship, wonder, and awe at the knowledge of God? Every time you're hunkered down, this is the way it's supposed to go. I want you to say, maybe God's got a better plan. Every single human being is the same in the fact that none of us are perfect. That all of us are what the Bible calls sinners. It might not be a popular word, it just means that we miss the mark. That we're never as good as we could be in every situation. And because of that, God sent Jesus, His Son, to save the world. The Apostle Peter said it this way, that there is no other name given under heaven by which we must be saved. And really, God wants to save you. The Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. Now you have to ask yourself, am I saved? Have I put my faith and trust in Jesus? Have I allowed God to redeem me from the mistakes that I've made? And I believe that there are many of you right now who you're saying, I haven't, but I want to. And I want to give you an opportunity right now to be saved. 
So if that's you, if you're saying yes to Jesus for the very first time, or maybe today's the day you're going to recommit your life to Jesus, I want you to pray a simple prayer with me. So bow your head and your heart with me if you can. And say, Jesus, I give you my life. Thank you for saving me. I believe in you, your life, your death on the cross, and your resurrection. Forgive me of my sins and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lead me and teach me to follow you. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And we all agree with you and said, amen. If you just said yes to Jesus, you made the best decision that you could ever make. And I want to know that you said yes to Jesus. So pull out your mobile phone, text the word SAVE to 51400. That info's on your screen. Someone from my team will get in touch with you because we have resources for you to help you on this journey with Jesus. Now don't go anywhere. I'll be right back with a big idea that I definitely want to share with you. Hey everybody, Daniel Fusco here. Welcome to today's Two Minute Message. No matter where you are, start your weekdays off with an encouraging thought from Pastor Daniel. You'll find his popular Two Minute Messages on Facebook, or you can subscribe to them on YouTube so you don't miss any of them. Every weekday, Pastor Daniel brings insight and encouragement on important topics that affect your life, each in two minutes or less. Join the community now. Just go online and search for Daniel Fusco on Facebook or Pastor Daniel Fusco on YouTube. If you're looking for a church family in the Vancouver area, we invite you to check out Crossroads Community Church. We are a family of faith, fully engaged, transforming our community and our world. And we would love for you to be a part of what God is doing through the Crossroads family. Our main campus is in Vancouver, Washington. For service times and directions, visit crossroadschurch.net. You can take part in the amazing work God is doing through the powerful message that, although life is messy, Jesus is real. By partnering with Daniel Fusco Ministries, you help make programs like this available to people who may not otherwise experience the love and hope only found in Jesus. With your regularly scheduled partnership, your generosity can help transform lives forever. Go to danielfusco.com partner now and become a part of the Daniel Fusco Ministry support team with your regularly scheduled or one-time gift. Be the hands and feet of Jesus in your world and become a partner today. So we're just about out of time on today's program, but I'd love to connect with you. Check out my website, danielfusco.com. Don't forget, sign up for the weekly newsletter. And would you consider and pray about joining us financially? Even a small gift of 10 or $15 goes a long way to help us get this message that Jesus has real out to more and more people. Find out more at danielfusco.com slash partner. I'm on social media. I know you are. Come join me. The Two Minute Messages on Facebook and YouTube. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. And if you don't have a local church, will you join us at Crossroads Community Church? Our internet campus is touching the whole globe. And you can find out more at crossroadslive.tv. Okay. Are you ready for today's big idea? And this is an important one. Always remember, God is good even when no one and nothing else is. Okay. I got to go. But never forget, the life is messy. Jesus is real. And he loves us even in the midst of our messy lives. God bless you. Can't wait to see you soon.